किया मर्दों को मर्दों ने उसे बाजार दिया जब जी चाहा मसल कुचला जब भी चाहा दुखकार किया औरत ने जन्म दिया मर्दों को तुलती है कहीं दिनारों में बिकती है कहीं बाजारों में नंगी नाचवाई जाती है ऐशों में दरबारों में ये वो बेइज्जत चीज है जो बंत जाती है इज्जत दारों में औरत ने जन्म दिया मर्दों को मर्दों ने उसे बाजार दिया सॉरी ओ ओके उर्दू ओके फाइन फाइन ओके फाइन उर्दू लेट्स नॉट साइड ट्रैक फ्रॉम द इश्यू दैट आई एम गोइंग टॉक अबाउट राइट uh i'd like all your comments please hold on to them i'm going to give you a lot of time about when you would react please hold on and we can react afterwards the issue that i'm talking to you about is that we have a growing concern across the world about trafficking trafficking among women of all ages trafficking across global frontiers and trafficking is akin to two other big businesses across the globe there are three very big businesses across the world one is drug the second is weapons and the third as i said is sex we need therefore to keep your eyes and ears open because i have been witness to very young girls being sold into the market and this is one great tragedy is that this does not very often happen by outsiders as much as it often happens from insiders of the family they could be members who we perceive as the unwanted left behind cousin it could be somebody from poverty it could be children who are on the wrong side of law for a variety of reasons poverty being one of the most distinct but different kinds of juvenile delinquents also add to the challenge and as a consequence of this today the world is seeing a seemingly large number of stories of trafficking trafficking in children and trafficking in women it's a gory story to know that in the local newspapers of the city i come from almost every second day i would read a story about a raid and rescue operations this does not augur well for a society that calls itself civilized prajwala about whom a reference was made even earlier is trying to make a good cause say no to paid sex we all live under a great growing western influence living as we do in an affluent society I was in conversation with a director from the mayoral office of Houston just 3 days ago. She also shares with me a deep concern that even in the state I am standing now and talking sex trade is a matter of grave concern. There are parts in the world where it is legalized. There is nothing of that kind. in india a question that comes up in the form of what we can do to sort it out what can we do to stop it how can we alert a civic society towards weaning the problem if not abolishing it completely firstly i don't know how many of you would put your hands up if i ask you how many of you have seen the hindi film gangubai debia 
So I think we must all stop celebrating prostitution in one form or the other. Gangubai celebrates prostitution. I have a problem with the thematic content of Gangubai much more than I have about the way Sanjay Leela Bansali is dealing with the film. This does not mean that I put sex trade under the carpet and believe that everything is hunky-dory. But I strongly believe that we have a culture in India where we celebrate wild women. Today, on an Indian soap, if you are sitting there between 6 in the evening and 10 tonight, you have all kinds of bad women on television. They are the mothers-in-law, they are the sisters-in-law, they are the wamps, all of them scheming against somebody else, trying to kill somebody else, dressed very inappropriately. If you look at women in Tollywood, they are props that work like moving sex toys. You would see the most well-paid heroines of South Indian cinema willing to be reduced to people whose job is to be wooed by a hero to show up their navel and their bust lines and to be exposed as symbols of sex. This is a far cry from what the men do in the morning. In the morning they are sitting before the idol, singing Durga Ashtami or singing Maisha Suramardini or one of those huge prayers on Saraswati, Lakshmi, Durga, who have you? We are the same society who ordered women for what they wear. Fortunately, many of you who are here don't do that. But it continues to be an evil practice in India and men still continue to decide the inches of what a woman should be wearing. And I think this we must stop. We across the globe must teach boys to respect girls. I often say this with a sense of responsibility. The day the Indian parent teaches the girl to fix a bulb and teaches the Indian boy to cut vegetables, we are making the first step towards genuine gender equality. The day we tell our son, you may be older, you may be younger, but your sister is not a doormat on who you will walk. You are making an important step towards gender equality. The day the boy in the house does not walk in and say, Mom, get me a cup of coffee. And says, Papa, can you make me a cup of tea? We are moving towards gender equality. These are very, very small things. Do these help in the long way in removing prostitution in the world? I strongly believe yes. Because prostitution is not going to be removed by all of us playing Shah Rukh Khan, going into some place, bringing the damsel in distress and saving her from the world. That's not the way it's going to happen in our world. It's far, it's far more fundamental. It's far more psychic. It's far more ingrained in our culture. We'll have to get it out of our heads that man is a superior sex and that women are available for a calling or women are available for a price. The second thing that we can do is whenever men crack crude jokes about women, we must learn to protest. It could be in a social gathering, but I think we need to tell our male friends, this is not a joke, this is a colonial hangover, let's give it up. Because I don't see women sitting along and cracking bad jokes about men's pelvic area. Why do men do it? Men do it because culturally we have been told that women can be taken for granted. We are all 
That is why we are told philosophically that we need to follow what Rama did and listen to what Krishna said. Unfortunately, in India today, we do the reverse. We think it's a good idea to follow what Krishna did and just listen to what Rama did. The converse is what is a good religious, conservative, orthodox methodology to fight sex trade across the world. Another important thing is there are institutions, organizations, which are organizing, are organized verticals working to fight sex trade in the world. And that is where all of us can help. I can tell you that Prajwala, in a state like two states of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, is the only institution that has a rehabilitation and a rescue home for sex workers. It is indeed unfortunate that governments don't have rescue homes, and those governments which have rescue homes don't have rehabilitation homes. Now, the uninitiated, I'd like to tell you that there are two different wings of sex trade. The first is when you rescue a child or a girl from sex trade, typically what happens is the police come to know that somewhere prostitution is happening, so they go and raid this place. They get the girl out of this place, and they put her in a rescue home. In Telangana and Andhra, you don't have rescue homes. So where do you leave the girl? You take her to Prajwala. They have one or two other institutions that work skeletally, work with suspect capacities. And then, after you rescue them, there's a whole area of counseling this person. Because this person has two problems. One, she's traumatized. Two, she's blackmailed. And thirdly, she's at her wit's end. She does not know what to do if she's safe from sex state. What does she do ne next month? Where does she go? Where does she get her food? Therefore, rescue operations. Prajwala arguably is the only institution which has a fundamentally brilliant rescue program. It moves children away, it moves women away from the typical stereotypical, what can women do? They can make pickles, they can cook, they can make clothes. Please, women can do many more things. Why don't we understand women have strength? Women in Prajwala are taught to do furniture. I'll give you my own personal experience. I had ordered for furniture in Prajwala. The furniture came in a trolley to my house. I sent my male clerk. There were three women who refused to take help from the man and said, we will fix it in your house. Now it is this confidence building that all of us can help women. How can you help Prajwala from sitting here? Please go to the Prajwala website, P-R-A-J-W-A-L-A -A -A is how Prajwala is spelled. Dr. Sunita Krishnan heads it. Unfortunately, as I'm talking to you today, Sunita is in hospital. She's recovering from a first degree cancer. But I'm sure his blessings are there. The tremendous this goodwill that she has built across the world is there and God is going to save her because it is these kind of people who are going to save a lot of other people. I know all of us don't have the gall to spend a lifetime protecting women in distress. So what we do is we strengthen women who strength, who help women in the mainstream of life. I can tell you, through Prajwala, I have done Kanyadan of women who have been protected and brought out of sex trade. And these women have been given in marriage to men who know that these women have come out of sex trade. Prajwala also has an institution where HIV children are brought up, bred, 
educated, sent to mainstream education institutions, and they are paid for their education. And they do not get government aid. Because you know, if it's government, it's the story of the Arab and the camel. You won't know when the tent went out, when the camel came in, and when you went out. So while Sunita does get support in terms of police, in terms of raids, she does not get money from the government. On the other hand, it's the government that relies heavily on Prajwala. I have the honor of uh, heading a committee appointed by the High Court to go to all the 22 districts of the two states of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. And I reported, this is public document in the High Court, that except Prajwala, there is no rescue home worth its name in the two states. Today, both the High Courts have protocols written by Sunita Krishnan on how to save women, how to ensure that they are rescued, where do you keep them, she talks to magistrates, gives them lectures on how they should be doing this because magistrates don't know what to do. Therefore, how do we NRIs help? You help by supporting her causes. You help by keeping in touch with Prajwala. I know of a common friend of mine called Revati from San Diego or San Jose, who's made a huge donation for Prajwala, she's paid for six months or one year of their uh, annual income. But I don't think we need to make big monies because little drops of water do make, help make enough flowing water. So please go to the Prajwala uh, website, see what little you can do. If nothing, if nothing, please tell her you all are all standing by her. Please tell Prajwala that there's a whole American society that is willing to stand up for the human rights of women in distress. This doesn't cost us money. This does not cost us anything but a few minutes. It's like a prayer. It's as effective a prayer as we do at an arti. Because what are we doing? When we are standing before a God with our hands clasped, we are saying we are the helpless, you are the light that leads us. We've made our errors, we've made our mistakes, we've made our blunders. Take us through the path towards a better way of living. If this is what we want to do, then let's look at it. I'm talking from his own altar. Maybe it is his divine wish that somebody should come here and tell you and open your eyes and ears. If you can today take this as your Prashad home, if Prashad is Prajwala, apart from the awesomely delicious rice and puri and aloo curry that I had before, I think Sai Baba is coming into your homes in a much, much, much more meaningful way. Teach every man, your kid, your neighbor, your son, your daughter, your husband, your neighbor, to respect women. Because sex trade is a powerful vertical which believes that man is more powerful than women and he can buy her. Please erase this from the mentality of men who still suffer this illusion in any which manner. Stop being the door mat. And two, if you have any signals anywhere of a woman in distress, please feel free to call any local distress numbers. The police will not harass you. There's not going to be a mafia that's going to catch up with you. But understand, only today it is somebody else's daughter. Those hands that went to reach another's daughter will not take too long to reach somebody near or dear to us. The best way we can amputate that hand is to shout the first moment when you can. Do it 
when it happens in the distance. Less people say you are shouting when it came too close. And before I sign off, I can only tell you, please, if you can, do what you can for Krajwala. On that note, any questions I'm willing to answer. After I see this uh, movie Gangubai, until that I didn't know that is it a is it a prostitution is uh, legal in India now? No, it's not not That's not legal in India. Yeah. A part of it is looked at in Maharashtra. That's the only state that looks at it somewhere. Yeah. I think Goa also is doing something in the direction, but most other states don't. It's not. It's oh, not. not illegal. But I must tell you that there is a petition lying in the Supreme Court yeah. wanting legalization of prostitution. That's what I heard. Okay. So there is a voice in that direction. There is a voice in that direction. I mean, the reason is because uh, she said in there, I mean, uh, the girl is getting a punish, then the, whoever guy did it, they're not getting punished. The girl in is fact, getting punished, in fact, so that's why till very recently, till about three years ago, we have a very peculiar law in India. We first very paradoxically called it Sita. Mm. So again, for our religious sentiment, we removed it from Sita and called it Immoral Trafficking Prevention Act. Now under the act, the man went unpunished. Yeah. The man went unpunished. It was the pimp, the man who gave the house, or the women who uh, got people into the prostitution or who got, uh, who asked people and all that. Those are the kind of people who are being punished. Now, however, they've amended the law and even men are being punished. Yes. I have a question for you. There are so many children who are being molested. Women are raped. And these are all very powerful. Very? Uh, they are the sons and uh, sons or son in laws All these men, uh, I hate to uh, be uh, sexist, but they break all this, but you know, the politicians are very well covered. So what are the laws doing to make sure that they get punished as as equal as a common man like me and anybody else? Right. The problem is in India, all are equal. Some are more equal than others. <laughs> <laughs> so the privilege are protected. Right. And you must understand that uh, for all the talk we do, all the glib talk we do, we continue to be a pathologically patriarchal society, yes. feudal, patriarchal, pathological society. I'm sorry I'm saying this on forum, sorry, but where else can I be truthful? And uh, how do we break this cycle? A part of you who go out of the country, whenever you go back, please be sensitive whenever this happens in little, little places and put in your word, put in your word. And I have known of incest happening. I'll give you a typical example. I knew of a girl who came to me 12 years after repeated rape by her maternal uncle. Now, the reason for the repeated rape was her mother was abandoned by her father. So she went back to this very powerful family in the cow belt, Uttar Pradesh or Bihar. And uh, she was living with the paternal grandfather. And when she told her mother, the mother said, you should have done, you would have done something to invite it. So now this is a very dangerous mindset in the Indian society that looks at the rape victim as the accused. Aapne kuch kiya hoga. Aapne gande kapde pene. Aapne ghar de rai. My son can come home at 2 o'clock in the night. I want my daughter home at 11 in the night. This will have to stop. And there is also, unfortunately, no medical studies done, at least to my knowledge, I'm sub subject to correction, as to the pathology of rape. I, I would believe that there's something terribly psychologically wrong with that boy who was party to the Nirbhaya rape. It's not a normal human being's behavior. Yes. Are they taking steps now to kind of condone them and giving you know more stricter uh, punishments and at early phase now? You know, stricter punishment is 
talked of. Stricter punishment has now come into the law. But, you know, I've said this before, and I, I'm on television saying this. The day the Nirbhaya judgment came, and a death sentence was given to three of them, I said, it's not going to help. Death sentence is not going to help. And lo and behold, after Nirbhaya, the day the sentence came, in the newspaper again, there has been a ghastly case. I'll give you a very simple example of how governments fail. You know, in the city of Hyderabad, right near the uh, toll gate of the city, where you enter the airport, a girl has been raped. Now, the law requires a six kilometer light arrangement with a constant closed circuit camera to which somebody should be viewing. Now, if this was working, how could that girl have been raped in six kilometer radius? This shows that governmental infrastructure is crumbling and nobody is asking them questions. Are they asking the right questions now? Now, we have a very different government, a very powerful government. Whether it's really oh, all governments are powerful only with regards to definite constituencies. They have constituencies. Today's government is powerful if it has to do A, B, C, D. Raped women are a minority. How does a government, if, uh, if a government does something for raped women, how is it going to get 25 more votes? And look at, look at how the lumpen elements in North happen. Carp chops are happening in North India more than anywhere else. Hate panchayats are happening in North India much more than they are happening in the South. Yes, I'll take your question. Yeah, please. So you're touching three subjects. One is sex trafficking, gender inequality, and third one is rape. Yes. So how these three are these three are three different subjects? Uh, if you see, there's a common thread to them. Sex for money and rape are qualitative differences. A qualitative difference. What happens in sex trade is as I see it, is that women do not agree for sex, but are forced into sex, and somebody else makes the money. From that money, they get a little bread, they get a little butter, they, cannot, they don't have to sleep on the street, they sleep at home. And over a period of time, if you're Ganguba, you become famous. Otherwise, sex trade and rape are almost parallel lines, minus a little refractive error. Now, gender equality. Now, I know that in India, uh, male sex workers are on the proud. They are also grown. But it's not as much as women are. And that happens because you believe, a lot of men believe, that it's your right to pay for sex. Where does it have come from? It comes from the myth, man, the superior sex. I have two things to say on this. One is on the lighter way. I believe a young man, maybe your age, walked up to a nice librarian in a big library and said, ma'am, I want this book, man, the superior sex. Where can I find it? She looked at him twice and said, I suggest fiction, sir. <laughs> the other is this. To all of us men who believe that we are stronger, one test. No man can ever stand the pain of carrying in a womb a foreign object that is growing for 10 months, deliver it through the small area from which it comes, through agonizing pain, and live at least for a year after that with all the biological ten-tailed signs of that one incident. No man can ever think of it. So that is, in short, why I connect all three of them. And, you know, I'm not being uh, tongue-in-cheek. But I'd just like to pass a comment. I know that when the Aarti began, there was a lady who spoke 
and requested lots of people to come in here and told them, she pleaded to them on the faith that they profess. Turn around and see how many people are willing to even spend a year, an evening. There's this wonderful movie many, many years ago, I think 40 years ago in Tamil, Sila Nerangalil Sila Manidargal. In this movie, Lakshmi, the protagonist, is raped by a rich businessman, Shrika. And the family, a typical middle class Tamil Brahmin family. Now, this is the profile, that is why I'm using these words. They get this girl, they purify her by giving her a bath. The family doesn't hide it, they, they make a noise of it and say, You are responsible. She, re she becomes an educated woman, she becomes a big time uh, investment banker, finance expert, she begins to run a bank, a head of bank. And during all this, she does not get married. And later she runs into Shrika and tells him, what I want you to realize is that what was wasted was not one night. It was a lifetime. Man must understand that while sex can be beautiful, it can also be traumatizing unless we know that difference. It could be rape, it could be marital rape, it could be incestual rape, it could be prostitution. Men of dignity, men of self-respect, and all of us who are very God-fearing must banner against it and shout as often as we can and make it a part of our living agenda. Because, like it or not, for hundreds and hundreds of years, the Indian male stereotype has put God, embalmed God as Durga Saraswati, made idols out of her, and come out and done what he should not be doing. We crack, we look at Mamta Banerjee also, we crack jokes on Mamta Banerjee, sexual jokes. Ministers do that. We've had parliamentarians say dirty things about Jaya Bachchan and Jaya Prada. It's unacceptable in a civic society. And look at the Hindi cinema. It's the only paradoxical where, where the prostitute is also the Pati Brata. The virgin prostitute is a myth only in Hindi films. And look, Savitri, uh, Jamuna, Sharmila Tagore, Meena Kumari, they've all idolized this prostitute. Today, common thought is changing. Today, women may not play the same role in the same manner. But that doesn't answer the question. Are we in time for the next article?